The bankruptcy of Wolfspeed sent shockwaves through the global semiconductor industry. Once a name synonymous with cutting-edge silicon carbide technology, boasting the world's first 8-inch SICK wafer fab and a mantle of the largest SICK substrate manufacturer, its downfall is a stark testament to the seismic shifts reshaping the technological landscape. At its zenith, Wolfspeed commanded a market capitalization of $16.5 billion. Yet, the relentless rise of Chinese competitors, leveraging mature manufacturing ecosystems and ruthless cost efficiency, shattered its dominance, exposing fatal flaws of technological complacency and unsustainable financial burdens. Crushed under a staggering $6.5 billion debt mountain, with a mere $1.3 billion in cash reserves, its stock price plummeted over 99% from its peak, culminating in a humiliating bankruptcy filing in May 2025. This wasn't just the failure of a company. It was a microcosm of American industrial hubris meeting the unstoppable force of Chinese technological ambition. The seeds of wolf speed were sown in 1987 in a restaurant near North Carolina State University. Six young founders established Cree Research, driven by a vision to commercialize silicon carbide for LEDs. Their breakthrough came swiftly, developing a method to grow sick crystals in the lab and launching the world's first commercial blue LED using sick just two years later. While its luminous efficiency was a meager 0.03%, the technological novelty secured a pivotal multi-million dollar order from Sumitomo Electric, anchoring Cree firmly in the LED industry. The pivotal moment defining its future trajectory arrived in 1991 when Cree introduced the world's first commercially viable silicon carbide wafer. This cemented its status as a foundational player in SICK, a compound semiconductor whose exceptional properties, handling high voltage, temperature, frequency, and power density far beyond traditional silicon would later revolutionize power electronics. Six destiny lay in electric vehicles, renewable energy, and, crucially, as the core material for next-generation AR waveguide displays. Cree's IPO in 1993 fueled diversification. Recognizing the potential of gallium nitride, the other cornerstone of third-generation semiconductors renowned for even higher electron mobility and superior thermal efficiency, Cree leveraged its SICK expertise. By 1995, it pioneered using SICK substrates for gone epitaxy, capitalizing on their compatible crystal structures. This innovation propelled Cree into the global top five LED manufacturers, fostering partnerships with giants like Siemens, Volkswagen, and Sumitomo. Its business solidified into three pillars, LED chips slash components, LED lighting systems, and crucially, the power slash RF division that would become Wolfspeed. A defining technological milestone came in 2011. Cree unveiled the CMF20120D, the world's first SICK MOSFET. This device, offering superior switching performance and efficiency, silent skeptics, and laid the groundwork for six widespread adoption in power conversion. Seeing the writing on the wall as its traditional LED and lighting businesses declined post-2016, Cree made a bold, all-in bet. It shed its lighting and LED product divisions entirely. In 2017, it symbolically rebranded itself as Wolfspeed, signaling a complete focus on becoming a vertically integrated powerhouse in sick and gone. The timing seemed fortuitous. The 2018 acquisition of Infineon's RF power business bolstered its leadership in RF Gen on CC technology. More significantly, Tesla's decision to integrate SICK MOSFETs from ST Microelectronics into the Model 3 inverter ignited the automotive SICK market. Wolfspeed, as ST's substrate supplier, rode this wave. Ironically, Wolfspeed itself had nearly been sold to Infineon in 2016, a deal blocked at the last moment. Buoyed by surging demand from EVs, solar, and industrial applications, Wolfspeed aggressively leveraged its technological edge and its pioneering 8-inch wafer capacity. It dominated the sixth substrate market, peaking at an estimated 80% share, though this steadily eroded to around 33.7% in the crucial N-type segment by 2024. The reason? Strategic myopia. While the global industry raced towards vertical integration, Wolfspeed remained fixated on massive capacity expansion and internal R&D, 
clinging to a model of primarily supplying its own devices with limited external substrate sales. Facing the strategic imperative of securing reliable silicon carbide supply chains, major global semiconductor players adopted divergent paths. ST Microelectronics chose deep collaboration, forging a critical partnership with China San and Optoelectronics to ensure access to advanced substrates and epitaxial wafers. On Semiconductor pursued vertical integration through acquisition, bringing GT Advanced Technologies under its umbrella to control substrate production internally. Following its unsuccessful attempt to acquire Wolf Speed, Infineon implemented a proactive global sourcing strategy, developing substantial partnerships with leading Chinese substrate producers SCC and Tanka Blue to diversify its supply base. Meanwhile, companies like Coherent and Rome leveraged their long-standing expertise, maintaining robust internal substrate manufacturing capabilities to ensure self-sufficiency and technological control. Woolspeed's monumental $5-plus billion bet was the Mohawk Valley Fab in New York, the world's first 8-inch sick wafer plant, opened in 2022 after seven years of construction. This single project consumed over half of Woolspeed's capital expenditure siphoning resources, and creating a massive fixed-cost anchor that would prove fatal when demand faltered. Woolspeed's aggressive expansion was predicated on insatiable demand, particularly from EVs, which accounted for over 60% of the sick market. However, this bet spectacularly backfired. The much-heralded EV boom in Western markets significantly cooled. Major automakers, facing slowing sales and inventory gluts, began delaying and canceling orders for sick components en masse. Wolf Speed, with its enormous, expensive new capacity coming online, faced a catastrophic mismatch. Fixed costs soared while revenue evaporated. Financially, the situation was dire long before the crash. Wolf Speed hadn't posted an annual profit since 2015. By March 2025, the chasm was unbridgeable. $1.33 billion in cash versus $6.5 billion in debt. Desperate measures followed. CEO fired. Factories shuttered. 20% of the workforce laid off. On May 21, 2025, the end game played out publicly. Wool Speed's stock plummeted 57% in a single day, vaporizing over $1 billion in market value. Three days later, the once dominant pioneer, controlling 60% of the six substrate market, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Plans for restructuring by Q3 2025 offer little hope. The core problem of massive, unutilized capacity built far from the world's largest EV market remains. The autopsy reveals a fundamental, fatal error. Wolf Speed left China, while competitors deeply embedded themselves within the Chinese ecosystem, partnering, sourcing, and selling. Wolf Speed remained distant, seemingly dismissive of the strategic imperative. It failed to grasp the velocity of China's semiconductor ascent and the ruthless efficiency of its manufacturing base. China didn't just compete, it redefined the game. Companies like SACC and Tanka Blue, backed by national strategy and vast domestic demand, achieved staggering scale and cost reductions. They mastered the complex substrate manufacturing processes closed the technological gap with astonishing speed and leveraged China's unparalleled industrial supply chains. Facing this onslaught, Wolf Speed's technology advantage eroded while its cost structure became utterly uncompetitive. Its downfall is a direct consequence of underestimating and disengaging from the Chinese technological juggernaut. Wolf Speed's fate is not isolated. It's a symptom of a deeper malaise afflicting Western tech industries particularly in the face of China's determined, state-backed technological surge. This pattern is brutally evident in the aftermath of U.S.-led sanctions. The 2019 U.S. entity list designation aimed to cripple Huawei by cutting off advanced chips and design tools. The result? A forced, unprecedented acceleration of China's semiconductor ecosystem. SMIC achieved 7 nanometers production sooner than expected. Huawei, collaborating closely with SMIC, returned to the 5G smartphone market with the Mate 60 series in 2023, powered by a domestically produced 7 nanometers Kirin 9000S chip. High Silicon, far from collapsing, refocused on mature nodes and diversification, maintaining its position as a global design powerhouse.
Sanctions acted as a brutal but effective catalyst, compressing a decade of development into a few years. Meanwhile, U.S. chip suppliers like Skyworks and Corvo lost billions in revenue. Placed on the entity list in late 2022, YMTC was denied access to critical U.S. equipment, halting its ambitious plans for 232-layer NAND production expansion. Yet, far from disappearing, YMTC pivoted. It focused on optimizing existing 128-layer and 196-layer technology, achieving significant yield improvements and cost reductions. By leveraging its vast domestic market and government support, YMTC maintained production and forced global NAND prices down significantly throughout 2023 and 2024, pressuring giants like Micron, SK Hynix, and Kyoxia slash Western Digital. The sanctions slowed YMTC's bleeding-edge progress, but made it an even more formidable low-cost competitor, disrupting global market dynamics. While ASML remains the undisputed leader in EUV lithography, U.S.-led pressure blocking EUV sales to China fueled a national crusade. SME and other research consortia received massive funding injections. While still years behind in EUV, SME rapidly advanced its deep ultraviolet lithography capabilities. Reports indicate significant progress with 28 NM capable DUV tools entering pilot lines. This relentless progress threatens the long term dominance of ASML, Nikon, and Canon in the lucrative DUV market segment, which remains critical for the vast majority of chips. Sanctions intended to preserve a decades long lead are instead accelerating its erosion. The past five years have witnessed nothing short of a revolution in China's semiconductor sector, driven by a potent mix of national strategic urgency, unparalleled state funding, and ruthless market focus. Recognizing the vast global demand for chips built on mature process nodes, China has aggressively pursued dominance in this sector. Giants like SMIC, HH Grace, and CXMT have embarked on massive capacity expansions, with SMIC alone constructing multiple megafabs across Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Tianjin. This strategic focus is paying off handsomely, positioning China to become the world's dominant supplier of essential mature node chips, powering automotive, industrial equipment, consumer electronics, and IoT devices, a surge that is actively eroding the market share of traditional players like TSMC, UMC, and global foundries in these critical segments. Complementing this manufacturing muscle, China has cultivated world-class capabilities in advanced packaging and testing. Companies like JCD Group and Tongfu Microelectronics have risen to global leadership in sophisticated techniques, such as chiplet integration and 2.5D slash 3D packaging. This sector, inherently less dependent on the most cutting-edge lithography, has become a cornerstone of Chinese strength attracting major international clients seeking cost-effective, high-quality assembly solutions. Simultaneously, the most significant unintended consequence of external sanctions has been the turbocharging of China's domestic semiconductor equipment and materials industry. Firms like Nora, AMEC, and King Semi are making rapid strides in developing etching, deposition, cleaning, and process control equipment for mature nodes. Concurrently, domestic suppliers of photoresist, specialty gases, and wafers are achieving qualification in major fabs at an accelerating pace. While still catching up at the absolute leading edge, the goal of a self-sufficient ecosystem capable of meeting the vast majority of production needs is now firmly within sight, systematically dismantling decades of entrenched Western and Japanese dominance in these foundational areas. Beyond manufacturing and supply chain resilience, China has unleashed a wave of design innovation. Moving well beyond high silicon, a vibrant ecosystem of domestic chip design houses, including Unisoc, GigaDevice, and Will Semiconductor, is thriving. These firms are aggressively innovating across diverse domains, such as AI accelerators, RISC-V processors, power management ICs, sensors, and connectivity chips, feeding the insatiable demands of China's colossal consumer electronics, automotive, and industrial automation sectors. The RISC-V ecosystem, in particular, has attracted massive Chinese investment as a strategically vital open architecture alternative to proprietary solutions like ARM, 
further solidifying the country's push for technological sovereignty and innovation leadership across the entire semiconductor value chain. Let us know what you think in the comments below. What other technological mysteries or future tech trends should we explore next on our channel? If this deep dive into the semiconductor industry captivated you, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exclusive content and in-depth analysis of the future of technology.